The fiscal framework is the national budget for the next three years. It estimates how much money government will receive in revenue, how much it will spend, and the difference between the two. Since 2008, government has spent more than it received, and the deficit has ballooned to 386 billion rand for next year. Interest repayments will be more than 1 trillion rand over the next three years. Many South African households know the burden of debt and how difficult it can be to break the debt cycle without taking decisive action to earn more, spend less, or both. Unlike struggling households battling to make ends meet as inflation rises and the cost of living spirals upward, government has the luxury of access to other people's money in the form of tax, and this has made them lazy. Year after year, Scopa hears how billions of rands paid by hardworking taxpayers have been irregularly and wastefully spent and nobody gets held to account. This is the culture of corruption that has taken a grip around the throat of our public finances. Taxpayers won't pay tax when they know that their money is being wasted. Money is already tight enough. The tax base continues to shrink as skilled South Africans head abroad to escape a debt trap created by a government increasingly out of touch with the reality that South Africa has run out of money and no amount of borrowing can fix what the ANC has broken. The fiscal framework is a powerful reflection of the choices that government has made. Government has not been able to risk to lift the revenue numbers. It has not earned more because our economy is not growing. Yes, it is true that COVID smacked our economy really hard at a time when we could least afford it, but we were already on our knees before the pandemic reached our shores because government chose the wrong road for our economy. It chose to position an incompetent government as the primary economic growth enabler. The vehicle for this growth was to be the state-owned enterprises. Year after year, while the state-owned enterprises underdelivered, yet overpaid the cadres deployed to loot them, one finance minister after the next bailed, bailed them out to the tune of nearly 200 billion rand and counting. The opportunity cost of this has been the economic growth that we never had and the exponentially higher revenue we never received, the jobs that never resulted the poverty cycle that never got broken, the houses for the homeless that never got built, or the schools to feed eager young minds, or the hospitals to heal the sick. Enormous damage was done. Instead, the public sector wage bill grew bigger and bigger, bloated with millionaire managers, while front, the front line got depleted, and the so-called broad-based black economic empowerment meant to redress past injustice just made a few people rich and left everyone else behind. It was refreshing to to hear President Ramaphosa talk of the business sector generating the jobs that government knows it cannot deliver. And it was also refreshing to hear the new finance minister speak in the same direction. I hope, Minister, that you will break the mould that your predecessors wouldn't or couldn't. The DA will not support this fiscal framework because it would look much better if the minister was actually going to do what he and the president say they will do. We need to attract capital into our economy for it to grow. And, and as our economy grows, GDP will rise and revenue increase. Investment will come from local and foreign business and from domestic savings. There was nothing in the budget to enthuse business. A much stronger signal from government is needed. Reduction of the bloated, unaffordable public sector wage bill, changes to labour regulations to encourage employment, an actual stop to the SOE bailouts, tax holidays and tax exemptions for startups, removing tax barriers to savings, and a cut in the tax on fuel. All of this is possible, but none of it happened, and that shows on the fiscal framework. The silence on the new state-owned enterprise to oversee the others must end. Hard-pressed taxpayers want to know if any of their hard-earned money will be thrown into this madcap idea. They know a swimming pool when they see one, no matter how hard government argues that it's a fire pool. Our energy crisis with rolling blackouts again today and the looming water crisis will never be solved if there isn't any tangible action. The problem is credibility. The ANC government spoke for itself when it abstained as the United Nations voted against the Russian Federation's illegal invasion of the Ukraine. In the likely event that this war drags on, sanctions against Russia will impact on its allies as well. And the ANC has painted us firmly into that corner. As financial pressure piles up on Russia, its ANC friends who celebrated with cocktails while its tanks rolled across the Ukrainian border 
who put their own interests first and drive our economy further into the red. Our economy knows what pariah status can do, and we are already on the Financial Action Task Force watch list for not fighting money laundering and terrorist financing strongly enough. Punitive action aside, our economy will not grow if our major trading partners are at war. The minister is unable to commit to a basic income grant because he's not confident that he can fund it. If GDP rises and revenue with it and the expenditure is better managed by making the hard choices, then it is possible and support for vulnerable unemployed South Africans can increase as more jobs are generated on a rising growth rate. That is the path out of the current unemployment and poverty trap that the ANC has walked us into one misstep after the other. We now face the real prospect of stagflation, low growth and rising prices, and that is going to hurt every South African unless urgent action is taken to unlock the private sector and reduce the fuel price. Do what you say you will do, Minister, and in October the picture can look a lot better. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you.